All right, everybody. I've got an encounter for you for this Friday. I hope you enjoy this one. Getting closer to Saturday. Don't forget, we're live on Saturday nights, and it's going to be at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. Come on over, spend some time with us, interact with us, and uh, join us on the live chat. My name is Jesse. I live in Sacramento, California. I had an encounter of a huge proportion with an unknown creature. I was spending some time with an elderly friend in Stockton, California. It was a week before Christmas. I had done my duties as a caregiver there. It was getting late and very cold. It was around 3.10 a.m. That's when I said my goodbyes and began to drive my little white car away from the trailer park area. Suddenly, fog began to envelop me, so dense that I could not see 10 feet in front of me. That did not worry me. I heard footsteps ahead of me. I did not pay attention at first, but time was 3.20 a.m. at the moment. I drew down on the driver's side window for air to go in. As I drove, I saw someone in black running in the side of the road. I was surprised. I could not see due to the fog, but I, I thought at the moment, who could be out so early in the morning dressed in black and running on the side of the road in this dense fog? Curiosity began to take over. I needed to take a look. Suddenly, a stench of death and decay came into my window. I wanted to gag. It was like rotting meat. Dread and fear started taking over my curiosity. By then, I was driving next to the thing. Its legs were taller than my car. It was very hairy. Very hairy. Black in color. It was catching up at 40 miles per hour. It grabbed my side mirror with a huge set of claws about two inches long. And it had very hairy arms. And it bent down to show its face. Oh my God. Its face. It was the stuff that nightmares are made of. Its eyes were very deep orange. It had no snout. Two skeletal slits for a nose and its mouth. I am trembling while I am typing this. Its, its mouth had a horrifying smile showing two rows of sharp teeth ear to ear. The teeth were at least two inches long. It was mocking me as if saying you are my dinner tonight. My dread became noted that my time was up. I didn't want to go this way. I sped up to 65 miles an hour. It still was catching up to me, but it was struggling at this speed. All I could think to myself, as I don't want it to catch me, but then I noticed it was having trouble at 60. I don't want to die this, this way. I don't want to be eaten this way, this monster. I don't want to be killed this way. I was now doing 80 miles per hour, and it was still chasing me with a smile behind me. But I was losing it, but it was crying. And then I started crying because it was crying. It was so emotional. And then, guys, to my embarrassment, yes, I did soil myself at the same time. And I noticed that it wasn't keeping up with me because of how fast it was running. It had a hold of the car. It suddenly let go of the mirror and skid into a walnut orchard and disappeared as it rumbled and tumbled and tossed and fell and flipped. It kept going at the speed mentioned until, or I kept going at the speed I mentioned until I made it to the highway. I was thankful I did not crash or hurt anyone at that speed I was going. My adrenaline had helped me survive this ordeal, even though the dense fog and the death stench were appalling. I kept going because I had known these roads for I had traveled them. Still doesn't make it safe, but I knew how to traverse them. A few miles ahead, there was a woman waving on the side of the freeway. Her car lost power. I stopped. Not because of being a good Samaritan, but fearing she would be encountering this thing, and I have a horrible demise upon its grasp. This thing would eat you and shred you most horrifically. I had a charge box in my car. I took it out, opened her hood, and started it. I yelled at her to drive away quick. There is something in the orchard, and it might head this way. She looked at me kind of funny, got in her car, and took off. I did, too, as well. I was so afraid of this thing. The next day, I returned back to the caregiver's house. I could not help but to watch the orchards. I did not see anything. And when I told the caregiver lady that I take care of what had happened, 
She told me that I had witnessed the creature that had been around her house for years. She said, it hunts at night and it loves to hunt in the fog. And she told me that I was lucky that I escaped. And if it was ever foggy again, not to worry about coming to her house that she could care for herself once. But for me not to come back. Man, that's that's a pretty good one there, guys. Uh, seems like they like to hold on to your car for sure. Um, that's happened to my uncle, which brought it back to my grannies. It happened to Sarah and Kaylee. So keep your windows up, guys. Um, I don't recommend driving at speed. You can't control your car because it doesn't do you any good if you wreck. And then your agits, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's going to eat you if you wreck. Because then you have nowhere to go and... It's going to pull you out of that car. It's probably going to chew on you. And it's going to make it look like you had an accident. So, I mean, I'm not saying don't get away. Just drive as fast as you can for the conditions. But don't overdrive and get yourself in a situation that you're not going to get out of, literally. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you Saturday night. Be safe. Keep your head on a swivel. And don't be something's dinner. <laughs>